I just got registered to vote for the first time in 24 years. <laughs> I'm feel excited and I'm happy for all the other felons that are able to vote now because now we have a say so in what goes on. The governor of Virginia just granted 200,000 people with felonies the right to vote. Here in the capital of the old Confederacy, it's important to realize that this is a step towards racial justice. All you have to do is fill out lines one through six. Okay. okay. The last time you voted was 1992. 1992. Yeah, that's a long time. Yeah. I do know a lot of felons, and I've made sure that all of them know that they are able to vote this year. I was incarcerated for 11 years. So have you voted before? No. No. Not even when I was 18, so I never got a chance to. They didn't bring ballots and registration people to the Power Train Correctional Center. How long were you not able to vote? Since 2002, Since 2002, when I came home from the penitentiary. By me not having my right at first to vote, it hurts. Felony disenfranchisement was written into Virginia's Constitution in 1902, and it was about white supremacy from the very beginning. The U.S. Senator who wrote the Constitution said that his greatest achievement was to, quote, eliminate the darky as a political factor in the state. Because of the 15th Amendment, delegates couldn't just bar black people from voting. Instead, they barred criminals from voting and made black people into criminals through aggressive enforcement of Jim Crow laws. The rest of Jim Crow's voter intimidation tactics are outlawed. There's no more poll taxes or illiteracy tests. But one vestige of Jim Crow still remains, and that's barring people with felonies from voting. It's not just a Virginia problem. Nationwide, six million Americans can't vote because they have a felony, and about 40% of those are black. About how many people do you register who this is their first time ever? I registered quite a few that said this was their first time. A lot of them didn't, they didn't believe me. I still get people to say, really? And so when they tell me that, I take this out. Take that out. And then they believe, you know, they'd be like, oh, okay, okay. The whole genesis of what we're talking about here today goes to the core of racism in this country. Many African Americans were being arrested early on in the southern states, so predominantly African Americans were the ones being charged with felonies. So the next natural extension would be, well, since we're arresting and charging all these African Americans with felonies, what an easy way for us to keep them out of the ballot box to say, felons can't vote. Now Republicans say he did it just to get more Democratic voters. And the governor is a Clinton ally in a swing state. But no matter what the governor's motives are, the effect of the decision is a powerful reversal of the racism written into the state's constitution since Jim Crow. A lot of people don't know what actually happened back at that time. And I remind the people of those things, and that's why it's so important now that you take advantage of this. Oh, this was the capital of Confederacy. Let me come in, do what I do, serve you, master, but I can't vote, or I can't vote and put someone else in a seat that you don't deserve, master. I have to wait back. Finally, I got it. Now I can say who is going to do what for me and when. So at one time, I couldn't even speak because my voice wasn't able to be heard. You can hear me today because I have a right to speak out as being able to vote. Mayors, senators, all those, they, they are people that we could have been voting on and we never had the chance to because we were felons. Now we have the chance. Come on, Auntie Gas. Don't look at me. Hey, boo. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi. Hi. 